Uh, hello everyone. My topic, uh, the top topic for my talk today is what would your own version Ruby look like. And my name is Stan. I'm a Taiwanese engineer, but currently working remotely at an Irish company called TikiSoft. Okay, so I want to give this talk because I have my own version of Ruby, and some of you might have heard it. It's called Gobi. Today I want to share some of my visions of Gobi and how do they make Gobi different from Ruby. So this is today's outline. I will first introduce my language Gobi. Then I will share some of the thoughts and how does it feel like to have my own programming language. And finally, I will talk about my visions of Gobi and my plans to achieve them. So what's Gobi? It's an object-oriented scripting language, and it's written in Go. It's largely inspired by Ruby, from syntax to internal designs. It's currently older than one year old, and we just uh, released 019 in March. Also, it already equipped some required libraries uh, for writing web applications. So it can now be used to write simple apps. OK, I, I believe some of you might be curious about how does it feel like to have my own programming language. And shortly speaking, it's a very good learning opportunity. First is that I had a deeper understanding about at least two programming languages. First is the model language, Ruby, and second is the host language, Go. As, my, as I mentioned earlier, Gobi is largely inspired by Ruby. So for me, I learned a lot about how Ruby works and uh, because I'm trying to reproduce its behaviors. And this means I need to study uh, anything from uh, syntax rules to like instruction set. And uh, those things are, <clears throat> these are things that we don't usually uh, will know if we just developing web applications. And I also need to learn Go, Golden as well, but not just, uh, uh, not just about how to use it, but uh, also its implementations. Because in programming language, there are some places will be executed like 100 or 1,000 times more than other places. And so in these places, we really need to care about the performance and understand how it works underneath. For example, this month, we improved 10% or of our overall performance just by changing like 10 lines of code. And uh, Writing Gobi also broadened my uh, computer science related knowledge. I can give you some example, like I need to learn uh, about how to write a parser because we don't use parser generator, we create our own parser. And I also studied about exception handling because we are trying to design one for Gobi. And for designing a new programming language, I think concurrency and threat safety is an important topic to study, so I took some courses of it. And because my main job is still developing real application, so uh, none of this can be learned from my job, which means writing Gobi <laughs> keeps me motivated from learning new stuff. Also, besides writing code, I have other works like writing documentations, managing text, and something like this. Or like today, I need to prepare talks for it. These are, <coughs> these are all about uh, learning new things. And of course, sometimes it feels like there are many responsibilities and very stressful, but I think I gain more than I paid. Then let's talk about my visions of Gobi. There are three simple descriptions about my visions. First is that it should be uh, as product, it should make users as productive as possible. 
And then I want it to have great con concurrency support because it's written in Go, so I want it can at least inherit this feature from it. And finally, I hope it can be extended with existing resources so we can use existing libraries instead of uh, building everything from scratch. I think these three visions can be converted into these three simple core values, which is productivity, concurrency, and extensibility. But Go is, Go B is just one year old now. So we haven't had uh, enough statistics about its concurrency performance. So we are still looking forward to optimize its concurrency. This is why the concurrency part will be, won't be included in this talk. But if you are interested, uh, you can find me after this talk, and I, I can uh, show you some example. And today, I will mainly focus in on the, uh, our plan to make Go be more productive. But before that, I want to give a short introduction about our plan to improve its extensibility. I think most of us will agree that both Ruby and Go has a mature community and have a lot of existing resources. This is a chart from GitHub. It shows how many repositories every major language has. You can see Ruby has around 870,000 repositories, while Go have around uh, eight <coughs> Uh, 285,000. That's more than 1 million repositories in total. So I believe it would be great if we can use those resources in an easy way. And Gobi has two approaches to help us achieve this goal. The first one is the plugin library, and the second one is Ruby compatible syntax and inter similar internal design. So let's talk about the plugin library first. Uh, it's based on Go's plugin build mode, and it allows users to compile and access Go packages during Go B runtime. In this way, uh, we can call Go's packages using 100% Go B, and it's very easy. Uh, I can show you an example. In this example, we will ping a PostgreSQL database just using Go packages. This is how you can generate a plugin object. And you can see that we are able to import Go packages and link functions. Then we can call first class functions on a plugin object. And finally, we can call uh, functions on a ghost pointer or ghost object. And this, is, this feature is already supported on both Mac OS and Linux. But why being able to call Go libraries is important for Gobi? Because Go is one of the most popular languages uh, we use for writing high traffic web applications. And I saw Gobi should include Go's concurrency support and libraries for helping building um, high traffic apps. So with Gobi, you will be able to write high traffic applications using Ruby-like syntax and object system. And then let's talk about uh, Ruby compatible syntax and internal design. This is a piece of source code of our test framework. And I believe you can all read and understand every line of it. So as I said, we have Ruby compatible syntax. And from my experience uh, on writing Ruby, I think almost 80% of our code are about defining classes and modules or defining our coding methods. So theoretically, if we can provide same syntax and same mechanism for doing both things, 
users can easily port most of the Ruby gems to Gobi with only few modifications. However, during the last time I gave this talk, I got a question about why don't we support Ruby gem directly? The reason is that because Ruby is an interpreted language, so in order to use a pure Ruby gem, we need to support a lot of features from syntax to functional level. But our goal is not to become another Ruby implementation. We will have some we will try something new and drop some features. So we don't plan to support all Ruby features. And even if we want to support all of them, we will face the problem Matt said before, which is it's easy to uh, reproduce 80% of, uh, of Ruby's features and hard to reproduce the rest 20%. Anyway, um, in order to let users build and share their own Gobi libraries using both features, uh, we will introduce our library management tool in the summer. And we will also integrate Ghost dependency management tool in the future. Then let's talk about today's main topic, our features and plans to make Gobi more productive. For me, a productive language must be good at these three parts which is readability, consistency, and predictability. So I will explain how do we improve them. First is readability. For me, the readability here means how semantical a programming language is. And actually, I think Ruby syntax is perfect, perfectly semantical. This is why Gobi has Ruby compatible syntax, and we are not planning to change that. And then the next one is how we keep Gobi programs consistent. The consistency here means how many ways can one programmer write the same program. In Ruby, there usually are several ways because Ruby is a very flexible language. But for Gobi, I want it to be less flexible because I'm sick of so-called best practices or style guides. First, it takes community time to create them. And for individual developers, we also, it also takes time for us to learn those practices. And most importantly, developers, into, including me, still need to adjust RuboCup settings by projects after all this works. So there's still no one universal uh, coding practices. And let's take a look at two Ruby best practice examples. Uh, the following examples are all from a famous repository called Ruby Style Guide. First, it suggests that we shouldn't use uh, else condition for unless keyword. Also, we shouldn't use the then keyword for if statement. I think in an ideal condition, these two examples shouldn't even exist in a style guide because obviously they can be forbidden from the language level at the first place. So here's our feature and plan to make Gobi program consistent. First is to have uh, three syntax rules at the first place. So let's keep using if statement as our example. In Gobi, there is no unless keyword, no inline condition. So every developer can only write conditional statement in one way. And let's take a look at our second example, the parameters order. But before that, let me explain why does the parameters order matter. This is also from the Ruby style guide repo as uh, like uh, previous examples. 
as you can see, if you don't define parameters in certain order, it will cause some bizarre behavior despite the code is inconsistent. So in Gobi, you need to define different types of parameters in certain order. You need to define normal parameters in the forefront, and then the, the normal parameter with default value. The th third type will be keyword parameters. After that, you uh, will be keyword parameters with default value. And the last one is spell parameter. And this keeps method definitions consistent, also prevents unexpected behaviors. So these two examples explain how Ruby syntax rules are designed and why did we choose the strict way. And then we will provide official coding guidance. It will include coding style guide and coding practices. And we will have this guidance once the community grows bigger. And finally, we will provide official formatter and interface on our coding guidance. Because we know programmers are lazy, so we will let users format their code with only one command. And the most important part is that all users will get the same result. And our goal is to el eliminate Drupal cup settings and reduce arguments about coding style and coding practices. And finally, we will try to keep Gobi's code highly predictable. I want to make Gobi follow the principle of this astonishment. According to its wiki page, principle of this astonishment means that a system should behave in a way users expect it to behave. So users won't get astonished by any of its behavior. In Ruby, some features can sometimes make it hard to predict the code's behavior, like monkey patching or method missing. And this is why we are thinking about changing or not supporting some Ruby features. So let's talk about our first approach to improve Gobi's predict predictability, which is limiting the effective scope. And actually, I think Ruby is already using this strategy to make some features more predictable, like refinements. And because refinements is a less uh, use features, so I will first give you a short demonstration of it. This is the sample code. And you can see that we extend the C class inside module M using the refine keyword. And then to activate the refinement, you need to use the using keyword with the module that contains the refinement. And if you, your method definitions include, or you call the method full before using the M module, it will be unreachable and raise a method error. But after using the refinement module, you can use the full method now. This is a part of the introdu introduction of refinements on RubyDoc. It says that refinements are designed to reduce the impact of monkey patching by providing a way to extend class locally. And as you can see from the sample code and introduction, Ruby uses refinements to limit the scope of monkey patching. So I want to do the same experiment on uh, method missing. So I made method missing uh, non-inheritable by default, which means if you don't explicitly say you want to inherit method missing's behavior, you won't get any unexpected behavior from the inheritance chain. And this is a method missing example in Gobi because bar inherits full class, so if you call a and non-existent uh, method on bar instance, 
it will trigger full classes method missing. And this is how the method missing works in Gobi. You can see that uh, even though bar inherits full class, it doesn't inherit full classes method missing behavior. In this way, we can prevent unexpected uh, method missing behaviors from ancestor classes or included modules. However, uh, I know we know that sometimes we still need some uh, still need method missing to be inheritable. For example, like uh, when full class is an abstract class, then you can explicitly enable it in every children classes. And now the method missing is inherited. And because you need to explicitly say you want to enable the inheritance of method missing. So you can always know which class will trigger method missing just by looking at its definition. And next, uh, I want to talk about exception handling. This is a feature we recently discussing about, and I find it very interesting because this is something you won't think about unless you are designing a language. The exception handling here means the exception will break the normal execution flow and executes a pre-registered exception handler. In Ruby, that means and rescuing an exception and execute the code inside the rescue block. So now imagine you have a programming language and it's probably, probably look like Ruby. Will you use, uh, will you give it Ruby's exception handling mechanism? If so, why? And if not, how will you design its error handling mechanism? And I'm going to share about our thoughts on these questions. So our answer to the first question is that we tend to not supporting exception handling in Gobi. First is that because uh, it's expensive. And, that, and then we think exception handling reduces the cost predictability by creating hidden control flow paths. Let me explain this using an example. Assume we have a, a method foo, which calls a method from library and another method from the app. And because the method from app sometimes raises uh, exception, so foo method rescues the exception. But at the same time, the library method calls x, and the x sometimes raises exception error as well. So this is the diagram of the method calling. The full class calls, uh, uh, the full method calls uh, from library and from app method, and from library calls x. And this is how it, uh, how the exception flow looks like. Because from app and x both raises error exception, so they will eventually hit the rescue block. And because we want to uh, rescue from app's exception, so this is uh, what we expected. However, before, before the first rescue, if X raises exception, it should go straight to the top. But now because we have rescue, so we accidentally change the way program should work. And most of the time, maybe we don't even know that because the method we accidentally rescue is hidden in the library's uh, implementation. And the main cause of this is that exception handling scope is not controllable. So how should we deal with errors if we don't use exception handling? And our first an our answer to this is that we can treat errors like object, 
just like uh, what we do in Go. In Go, arrows are usually passed as normal objects. So you can see that if you call get connection, you will get two values. And C is the connection pointer, and the arrow is the arrow object. And you can decide if you want to deal with the arrow immediately or you return the arrow object to the coder. And I think this is better because it forces you to deal with the arrow from the ne nearest place. So the arrow won't create any hidden control flow path, which means it's more predictable. So what's our plan? Well, we do prefer goes way uh, than exception handling. But we don't want to check if error is nil every time we get a return value either. So currently, we are experiencing uh, this. We want to introduce a new class called result and use it to carry error messages and develop a new pattern to change every possible conditions. So you will have every possible conditions in a serious method chain. And this, this feature, this class already being introduced to Gobi, but it's still work in progress. So we are looking forward to receive any feedback about it. And if I have a chance next year, I would, be glad, uh, I would be glad to share the result with you. Okay, so to summarize our plan, we tend to make Gobi have straight syntax, syntax rules and provide official coding guidance. This way, developers can collaborate with each other more easily and reduce arguments about coding style or coding practices. And then we will forbidden method missing inheritance by default to limit the method missing affecting scope. But it can still be enabled explicitly. And finally, uh, we are developing a new class to help uh, handling errors. We will treat errors as values and avoid uh, checking errors with uh, if statement. And finally, uh, here are some useful resources I used to create Gobi. Uh, the first one, uh, write an interpreter in Go. This book will tell you how to write a tree walking interpreter using Go. And the second one from Land to Tetris, uh, this is a course that teaches you how to build a computer from large gate to a simpler virtual machine and operating system. So uh, it will teach you how to build a state-based virtual machine, which is very helpful if you want to build a virtual machine on your own. And finally, I think uh, most of you already know this, is Ruby under the microscope. It helps you understand how Ruby internal works. And we are still looking for more people to join us. We currently have four to six regular contributors and uh, for like 40 to 50 people in our Slack and we constantly have a discussion about programming languages and features. So here's, us, uh, here's us some links you can check out. I'll pause this for a while. And this is my talk. Thank you for your listening. Um, so is there any question? Recently, many languages have their own code formatter. And how, uh, what do you think about it? 
Do you have any plan to、uh, develop code format for Gobi?、Uh, yes, we have.、Uh, you mean code format, right?、Uh, yes. Yeah, we have planned to build this, and、uh, but I think we should first come up with a style guide. So, and before we can come up with style guide, we need to have enough user base to come up with a、uh, uh, good practices. So yes, we have planned to build this, but it's in future's plan, maybe next year. I see. Thank you. So you were talking about you wanted to further、uh, for your goals. You had what do you? Sorry, I forgot what to say. <laughs> yeah, for your goals, you wanted to further improve your what do you call Gobi project, and you have stated that you have other goals to do.、Uh, and in the beginning, you were saying that you have you wanted to look. It, uh, it, you recently started a web application that's enabled, so I was wondering if we, if I wanted to make an application using Gobi,、um, would it be further like supported in other ways, as you have stated? Like, so <laughs> I don't know why.、Uh, uh, my question is,、um, you are stating that there will be, a, you know, you have further plans to do add-on features and. I'm really happy about that, but however, I was wondering,、um, there might be times where you were like use this、um, what Go B Go project rather than you know implementing Go B like、um, scripting. So I was like,、uh, would that happen or not?、Uh, sorry,、uh, can you speak a little bit louder? Oh, okay, sorry. So Go B has. Still, you know, you can use Go languages to library to put in, right? And then you can use it, right? Yeah. You know, and if I fully wanted to only use Gobi and make a web application, would that be possible, or would it there? Would, is there still, you know, further improvements when doing that? For example, you were talking about、um, implementing what you call APIs and stuff like that. Um. Uh, maybe I can talk. Uh, talk to you、uh, about this later.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah that so- sorry, I have, I have trouble listening to English. Oh,、yeah. it's okay. Okay. So thank you for your talk, and、uh, I'm sorry if I can't understand about Gobi.、Um, go- can Gobi use any resources of Ruby or Go?、Uh, I I mean, the gem gem of Ruby or something like that. Um, currently, uh, you need uh, uh, because uh, as I said before, because、uh, Ruby is interpreted in language, so we need to interpret Ruby source code and to pa-、uh, pass its syntax and su- and support its features. So currently. Unless it's a very small gen, so、um, unless it's a very small gen, and of course maybe we can support it directly. But for most of、uh, Ruby gen, because like for example we haven't support rescue block, so if the Ruby gen uses rescue, it will rest syntax error. So、uh, no, currently we can't support any Ruby gen directly. And the reason we can support Go packages is because that、uh, Go can be compiled to、uh, binary, and we will link to that after the compile. So we don't need to support like Go's、uh, Go's syntax or Go's features. We only need to support、um, the library,、uh, the binary format function.、Uh, if it,、uh, it's more like We can write C extensions for Ruby, and not because we support C syntax, but it's because it's compiled to in、uh, shared object format, and we can link to it. Yeah, so we、uh, for now,、uh, and we have、uh, plan to support、uh, Ruby C extension in the future, but not for the normal Ruby gems. You always need to modify some of the code. In order to port the gem to Gobi. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the nice talk on Google. I think it's very inspiring. Uh, just one part I didn't understand. Um, the concurrency model of Google, is it the same with Go language? Yes, uh, basically, uh, uh, we build a, a every Go bistro is built upon a Go routine. And the way we communicate with each other is also using a channel. But the channel in, in Gobi is, uh, doesn't have type checking. So you can pass any type of object through the channel and you can receive any type of object through the channel. So basically, our concurrency model is the same as Go. I see. Um, how did you implement this concurrency model? Uh, so Gobi is written in Go, and uh, you built the concurrency model support from scratch in Go, or? Uh, this, is, uh, this is quite hard to explain from here, uh, but I can explain with you uh, later okay, with our you. computer. Yeah. I think this is. Uh, thank you for your listening again.